All right, got a lot of requests to do a breakdown on the way Nick Anderson throws a baseball. Uh, I think a lot of people kind of know me as the short arm guy, so I uh, wanted to do a breakdown on how Nick Anderson um, is so freaking good and throws that way. All right, what's up, guys? So I got a lot of questions regarding Nick Anderson of the Tampa Bay Rays. Um, obviously, I think you guys have seen me post a lot of stuff um, in, in regards to arm path and how I've kind of gone from a transformation from you know, kind of real, essentially long, you know, back here and then kind of have that, you know, that rotation wrap type thing. And then I've kind of overhauled it to more of a compacted, you know, connected type uh, path. And I think first and foremost, the one thing that I want to clarify with a lot of guys is, is, um, you know, I talk about this a lot and I try to make it complete sense. But it, when you throw a baseball, everyone's gonna like do it differently. I think that's the pure beauty of throwing a baseball is that, you know, the way that I throw it efficiently is gonna be different than the way, you know, maybe someone on TV that throws 100 miles an hour throws it. First and foremost, what I try to tell guys is you gotta identify that most natural athletic arm path and once you can identify that, then we can start going along with you know, the progression because the reason why I had to overhaul my arm path when I got released was because I wasn't in a natural slot. I was in a slot that um, you know, I was basically forcing because I was trying to get movement on the ball because I was tired of freaking getting hit all over the yard. So I you know, kind of said, okay, I need, to, I need to sink the ball. So in order for me to sink the ball, I need to drop my arm slot and create an axis and all of this stuff. And I was young, sorry. You know, so long story short, I was forcing the arm action that wasn't natural and I had to go along this, this journey of, of rediscovering what that natural athletic arm path was. I've written a few blogs on that and I encourage you guys to reach out to me if you, if you need to figure out how to go about discovering that. Now back to the breakdown with Nick Anderson, as you see, um, you know, he has this real kind of compacted short 90 degree front side and then you'll see his throwing arm is, is essentially pretty long, almost like a Jamison tie-on. Uh, that's the kind of the first game, name that, that popped in my mind when I was watching this, this video. But the, the biggest thing that I see, man, is like he does, a uh, crazy job, uh, just unreal at the amount of separation that he has from the from his throwing arm to that front hip. So whether it's a capacity thing that he's just able to get into that position, or it's just like that's how he discovered, you know, to get the most out of his body is to get in that position, right? We all know that we want that separation. We want to create that stretch um, to build up that torque. And then at that last second, when it's time for that back hip to go into rotation and that back knee go into internal rotation, then that arm is along for the ride and, it, and the power output is drastically higher. So the biggest thing is the separation for me. And then notice how like when I, when I talk about you know, the arm being along for the ride and, and treating the arm like a whip, you just can sense, um, and, I, and again, like I don't, I've, I've never seen him throw live or, or whatever, but you just have a really good, I at least have a sense that the way his throwing arm is, is it's so loose that it's acting as efficiently to like that whip as possible. Like he's, he's moving through time and space very efficiently and getting into really good positions. Um, and then when it's time to go into that rotation and start, you know, breaking that, that back hip, back knee, and, and go and take all of that power towards the plate, you see that his arm, it's not, it's not forcing. It's, it, there's, no, um, there's no forceful movement. It's just, it's, it's just a natural, long, loose whip. And then at that last second, it's all of that energy, boom, out through the hand. And um, I think if you can get the analogy of the whip like completely understood, because I know it took me quite a while to like really grasp that concept. Once you can grasp that, and you see a guy like this pitch or just throw a baseball, you're like, holy smokes, that's, that's right on. Like, that's exactly what that is. Um, but uh, but it, it's funny, dude, because like, you know, this is where I am in the space as far as, you know, the instruction side and, and trying to, you know, instruct individuals on how to get the most out of themselves. And I think that's where the disconnect is in the industry is that sometimes we, we kind of approach things as a, just in life as there's a set way to do it. You know, and we go about it 
X, Y, Z way, and then you're supposed to look like that. And I think when it comes to throwing a baseball, it's so pure and, and beautiful in its own sense because everyone does it differently. And everyone has a, a, a different way of going about it, extremely efficient. Yeah, there's certain things that we can we can do throughout the delivery that are that are staples, you know, that are key components to high power output. Um, and then some people do that drastically better than others, but then that other person that doesn't do it as well as that person will maybe do another thing that's better than that person, so therefore their velocity and command and everything is at the same same level, if that made sense. But uh, yeah, to break it down, I'm not trying to say that you everyone needs a short, compact arm. Again, it's the identification process. For me on the instruction side, like I was talking about as far as the disconnect is, um, you know, we need to do a better job. I need to do a better job a lot of the times as far as the one-on-one -on -one stuff with guys and saying, okay, hey, that's how you throw a baseball, but I don't think that's as efficient as we can possibly get to. And maybe we need to do some things uh, to maybe find that natural path to maybe increase our efficiency, to increase our command, to increase our power output. And, it's, and it always kind of comes to, um, you know, that one-on-one -on -one type identification process. And that's why I think, you know, the, the analysis stuff, the, my one-on-one -on -one coaching stuff, like that's so much beneficial um, rather than just seeing an Instagram post on, you know, a breakdown of a particular person and then going, oh, I have to do that. Like, that's not, you know, that's not the case. For you to get the most out of yourself, you need to like identify the things that you do well and then, and then go off that. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, always, a, always a blast doing breakdowns on guys. But um, yeah, I'd be interested to dive in more of, of Nick Anderson's background and, and try to figure out, because I know he went, he didn't sign out of, out of college and went to the Frontier League independent ball for three years and then got picked up by the Marlins. So I'd be curious to see like how hard he was throwing in indie ball, how hard he was throwing in college, and then you know maybe get a chance to talk to him and, and hear about his velocity journey maybe he had like a drastic increase on a you know mechanical thing or maybe a mindset thing but whatever it is the dude's you know he's having a really good postseason and he's <laughs> he's fun to watch that's for sure but um, any questions as always shoot me an email that can be found on my instagram bio and um, be sure to subscribe to all my stuff and blah 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 all right guys as always much love god bless